Hi everyone, and you're welcome to the first Dreamspace Homespace Minecraft episode. My name is Neve, and joining me today is Kaylin. Hi everyone. And we also have Amanda, Richard and Corey in the background to answer any questions you may have. So if you get stuck at any stage, please feel free to pop a question into the Q&A section and the team will be happy to get back to you. Okie doke. So the first thing I'm going to explain is that you can pop this live webinar on pause at any stage. So if you need to catch up with getting your blocks or if you just want to make your blocks a little bit more personal to you, you can pop the video on pause and then once you resume, you will take off from where you left off. So don't worry, you won't miss anything. OK. So today we're going to be coding, but what exactly is coding? So coding is a set of instructions we give a computer program in order for it to achieve something. So when I think about coding, I think of it like a recipe for a delicious chocolate cake. So when I'm making a delicious chocolate cake, generally I'd like to follow the right steps if I wanted to end up delicious. However, if I don't follow the right steps and I put too little chocolate in, or I leave it in the oven for too long, it might not end up delicious. Well, it's kind of the same way with coding. We need to follow the right steps in order for the computer program to do what we want it to do. So today we're going to use make code. To code or give instructions to our agent in order for our agent to carry out tasks. Okay, and make code uses two different coding languages. So it uses block based coding and it also uses JavaScript. Today we will be using block based coding. So what you need to do in order to get started is either go into Minecraft EDU if either you or a family member has an Office 365 education account or alternatively you can use the code builder. And I'm going to demonstrate now how you can use the code builder. So you open up a web browser and you type into your web browser Minecraft dot make code dot com. Now, and this screen will open up for you. Because you're going to be following the steps, you're going to create a new project and give your project a name. I'm just going to call my Neve. And then your code builder will open and you will be able to follow the coding instructions using code builder. However, you can also use the pseudo code version. And the pseudo code version is available at aka dot ms forward slash mc for minecraft and web one for webinar one once this page opens up you can click on this one here and then you will have to download print and cut out the blocks and slot them in together or embed them in together and some of you might be asking yourselves well what exactly is pseudocode well, pseudocode is a step by step written outline of your code that you can gradually transcribe into a programming language. So maybe you're not just ready for the programming language today. So that's OK. So you choose whichever version you have available to you or whichever version you're most comfortable with. So now I'm going to pass you back over to Kaylin and Kaylin's going to get started and bring you into the world of Minecraft. OK, so the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to get started up on Minecraft. So once you've gotten started up on Minecraft and you've logged into your Office 3.5 education account, you're just going to click on play. And now we want to create a new world. So we want to create something that is completely blank and has nothing else in it. So we're going to click on create new and we're going to use templates. OK. So as I said, we want something that's completely blank. We want nothing else in it to distract us. So we're going to go to blocks of grass because 
all it has in it is blocks of grass. So we're going to click in there and we want to create new because we want to edit some of the settings. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the world name up here at the top. So I'm going to change it to webinar one, but you can change it to whatever you'd like. Just something that you'll remember when you want to get back to this world later on. So I'm then going to scroll down. And I'm going to make sure that show coordinates is on, that activate cheats and code builder, that those ones are on and down the bottom that show classroom settings is on. So the reason why we want the coordinates on is so that we can see where we are in the world. We can see where our agent is and it can help us build later on in the world as well. So it's an important thing to have on. We're then going to click on play and our world is going to be created for us. So when your world is loading, you do have some tips that come up onto the screen. So always read them to see if you'll get any tips or tricks when your world is being created. OK, so now that we're in our world, I'm going to pass you back over to Neve so that she can explain how to navigate in Minecraft. Thank you, Kaylin. Okie doke. So something really, really important to know when coding in Minecraft is that we control our player using the Minecraft controls and our player controls our agent using code. So therefore, we need, really need to know the Minecraft controls very well. So if we want our player to move forwards, we press the W key on the keyboard. If we want our player to move backwards, we press the S key. If we want to enable our player to move left, we press the A key. And if we want our player to move right, we press the D key. Another really, really important key is the space bar. If we want our player to jump, we have to press on the space bar once. By double tapping on the space bar, we enable our player to fly. Pretty cool. But if we want our player to fly higher in the sky, we need to double tap and hold the space bar. So then when you decided that your player has gone far enough up into the sky, you can let go of the space bar and your player will hover there until you want them to come back to ground. However, we need to let our player know that we want them to come back to ground. So we do that by double tapping on the space bar once more and they will fall to the ground. But don't worry, your player won't hurt themselves. And the last and probably the most important key is the C button on the keyboard. But, and when I think of this, I think of C for code. So when we press the C button on our keyboard, then the code builder will open up. And the code builder is what we are going to use today to code our agent. So Kaylin is going to take you through that a little bit in more detail now. OK, thanks, Neve. So you can also move around your camera um, by just moving your mouse around as well. And that moves your character's head around and you're able to see around. And if you forget the keys that Neve just explained to you there, I have them set up so you can see them on the left hand side of my screen as well. So don't worry if you didn't get all of that, you can look over there to the side of my screen. So now that we've learned how to go into Code Builder, let's click on C for Code and get started. So we're going to be using Microsoft Microsoft Make Code, like Neve said earlier on. So we're going to click on the Microsoft logo on top and wait for it to load up. And once it loads up, that's where all your projects are going to be saved. So no matter what project you make, they'll all be saved inside this code builder in here. And you'll also be able to see some tutorials down at the bottom. So once you scroll down, you'll be able to see some tutorials that you can do as well. But we want to create our own code today. So we want to be able to build our own with our agent. OK, you can see our little agent is getting ready there. 
And now you can see there are the tutorials that I was talking about. And if you scroll down, there's some other cool ones there. And you can see that my previous projects are up here. But as I said, we want to make a new one. So now you can name your project and I'm going to call it the same that I called it, that I called my world, just so that I remember that my world is called webinar one and now my project is called webinar one. And I'm going to create that there. OK, now you can see that this is the same screen that Neve showed you earlier on. So if you are following using the web version, you'll be able to see the blocks are the exact same and you're able to find them as well. So we are using block coding today. And the beautiful thing about block coding is that everything is nice and color coded for you. And that means that if you're trying to find a block, you don't know where it is. Just look at the color on my screen and go to the section of that color. So, for example, if I wanted to find another chat command blocks block, uh, I can see that it is blue. I can then go over to the blue section over here and I'll be able to see that that's where that block originally came from. Also with block coding, all of the blocks click together like a jigsaw. So I'm going to just take out a random block now and show you how they click in. So you can see that the block goes yellow when you're about to click it in and then it clicks in there nice and neatly. If your block is sitting outside here, you can see that it goes gray and that means that your agent doesn't know when they have to carry out this action. So you need to tell them when by clicking it into the box. OK, so now the agent knows that on chat command run, they're going to do that move. But I don't want this block of code right now, so I'm going to bring it over here. If I hover it over the sections to the left, a bin will come up. I let go and it goes into the bin. Now, before we get coding, let's have a look and meet our player. OK, so I'm going to click X to get out of my code builder. And you can see in the top left hand corner, there is the coordinates that I was mentioning earlier on. So the top ones are my coordinates and then the agent is obviously theirs. So we're on top of each other right now. We have the same coordinates. So if I look down, I can see my agent. I'm going to go around to the front of my agent to say hello. And there they are there. So now that we've met our agent, why don't we try and give them the first challenge? So I'm going to go back into Code Builder. And what I want to do is I want to try and get my agent to come and find me no matter where I am. OK, and I'm going to use this block a lot. So I'm going to put it in the chat command block. It's going to fit in there, not on start, on chat command, because I want it to happen a lot of times. And I'm going to call that here. But now what I want you to do at home, I want you to try and find the block. So pause the video now and try and find the block that will get your agent to come and find you. OK. So what section do you think it might be in over here? Hmm. Would it be in the agent section or the player section? Maybe the player section. OK, they are the two right ones because we want our player to do something. We might want our agent to do something. So let's look in our player section. OK, we're going to scroll down. There's the chat command block that we wanted. We already have one. I can't see anything else there that will get our agent to come to us. And that's probably because we need to remember that we are the player and we are controlling the agent. So we want our agent to do it. So we're going to have a look in the agent section. And there it is. It's the first block up the top. So we're going to drag that block out. And on chat command here, agent teleport to player. So if you are using the jigsaw pieces at home now as well, you can bring that code in and we'll see it working now. So I'm going to now click out of my code builder. I'm going to move far away from my agent using the controls that Neve taught us earlier on. I'm going to type on T to talk. And I'm going to type in my chat command word. So my chat command word was here. And then I'm going to type in enter. And there's my little agent. They came and they found me. So that code is, is a success. So now what we want to do is we want to try and get our agent to move. 
So why don't we try and do something easy and get them to move in a square? So first thing we have to do is we need to find another one of these chat command blocks. So we can see that they're blue. Go over here to the blue section and bring out another one of these chat command blocks. And because I want them to draw a square, I'm going to write in. OK. So where do we think we could find a block that'll get our agent to move? So at home, pause now and I want you to try and find that block. And once you've found it, you can unpause the video and follow us again. So where do we think we could find that block? Well, if it's our agent we want to move, then would it be in the agent section? OK, very good. So using what we learned earlier on, we're going to click back into the agent section. And is there any block here that you think we could use to get our agent to move? What about the agent move forward by one? OK, we'll try that one out. So let's bring that one in. We're going to click it in like a jigsaw piece. And actually, we're introducing a new thing here as well. So the block has a drop down arrow. And these drop down arrows are your best friend in block coding because it means the block has options. So we can use this block to get our agent to move forward, back, left, right, up and down. OK, so let's just use a few of these blocks to get our agent to move in a square. So agent move forward. Agent move left. Agent move forward. Agent move left. So we have four blocks. Because there's four sides to a square and these numbers in here are telling us how many spaces our agent is moving. So right now our agent is only moving one one square. We want to make it a little bit more obvious when they move so that we can see what they're drawing. So I'm going to change that to five just to make it a little bit more obvious when we're testing out our code. OK. Now I'm going to double tap the space bar and fly up to the sky to see our agents. So I'll be able to see them drawing the square. I'm going to type T to talk. And then I'm going to type in. My chat command, which was square. OK, so there must be a bit of a problem here because our agent didn't draw a square. So let's have a look at our code and see. Is there anything that we could change to try and make them draw a square? Hmm. Could we get our agent to move forward, right, back? and then left. Would that make our agent code a square? OK, well, why don't we try that out? Because there must be a reason why this one didn't work. So forward, right, back and then left. OK, so let's test this one out and see if they make a square. So T to talk and type in square. OK, so that's really interesting. So it did work that time, but let's have a look at our agent and see how they move when they're actually walking in the square. Let's try and look at that one more time to see how they're moving and see why do we think that it worked that time, but not the first time. You can see that they're they're facing forwards the whole time, so that's what happened. So that block must obviously mean that they're just moving in that direction. They're not looking in that direction. But it's still the square still worked. Why don't we try and see if there is a block that will get our agent to turn? OK, so we're going to try and test out a new code. So I'm going to click on player to get a new chat command and I'm going to call it test because we're going to test out a new thing. So I'm typing in test. Again, if you're at home, pause the video now and try and see is there another way that you could get our agent to do a square? Because in coding, it's a really important to know that there are loads of different ways to do the same things. So 
we'll try and find a different way. Why don't we go in here and we can try and move. We have a move forward, but then is there one here that will get our agent to turn or turn around or something? How about if we use the turn left block? Would that work? OK, yeah, we could use that one because then our agent's turning. OK, so we can move forward, turn left, move forward again. Turn left. So we're going to need four of these blocks. OK, very good. And now we're going to change the numbers over here like we did in the other one. Five, five, five. And we're going to test out our code. So T to talk. And our chat command was test. Perfect. So our agent created a square there and it was a perfect square. The only thing is that there's a lot of code going on here. So is there any section over on this side over here? that you think we could use to try and make our code a little bit neater. So at home, pause and try and find the block of code and then come back and we'll show you where we found it. So where do we think we could find a block? Well, if we look in the loop section, we might be able to put a repeat block around some of our code so that it would repeat and then we could condense it OK, excellent. And you're introducing a new coding concept there as well, Neve. So we're bringing in loops and loops make our code a lot tidier and neater. So you don't have the same blocks repeated. So I'm bringing out this repeat four times block and every block that I put in there will be repeated on a loop. So I want my agent to make a square. So I am just going to grab these last two blocks and put them inside the loop. So now what's going to happen is my agent will be told to move forward by five, turn left, and then it'll go back to the beginning again. Agent move forward, turn left, back up again, and it'll do that four times because that's the number that's up here. But that means that we don't need the rest of this code and it can go over here to the bin. Now my code here is getting a little bit crowded, so I'm also going to get rid of this on start block, bring it over to the bin, and you can just move your code around to make it look, look a bit neater for you. Okay, but let's test out this square now and see if it works now with our loop. So T to talk. And use our chat command, which is test. And perfect, so there's another way. So now we have three ways to get our agent to move around in a square, which is brilliant. Okay, so now they're moving in a square. Why don't we try and get them to build something? So where do we think, pause now and try and see if you can find a block that will get our agent to drop blocks or build something while they are moving. Okay. So we are talking to our agent here. So the same with the rest of these blocks. I'm going to go into the agent section. And if I look down through these blocks here, I can see that there's an agent place on move. So that means every time they move, they're going to place a block. So I'm going to bring that one out. Now, if I put the block down here at the bottom of my code, my agent will only know that they have to drop blocks after they have moved. So we need to tell them right at the beginning that before you move, you need to place some blocks. So I'm going to bring this one right up to the top. The first block that our agent will see on that chat command. And I want to turn that on. So it's false now, which means it won't work. But if I turn it to true now, our code is all correct. So our code here is all good, looks good to me, but there's one thing that our agent doesn't have yet, that we have, but our agent doesn't have. Our agent needs some blocks. So I'm going to go into my inventory and click on E, E for everything. 
to get to our inventory because we have everything we need in creative mode here. Any block. So if you want to use, you can use whatever block you like. Scroll down here if you want to pick some nice colorful ones, but I'm going to search so you can also search and I'm going to go to stone. And just choose one of them and that will bring the blocks down and put them, give them to our player. So now our player has some blocks. Click out of the inventory and we need to give the blocks to our agent. So I'm going to drop down from the sky. And to give blocks to your agent, what you do is you walk right up to them, make sure you're looking at their face and you right click on their face. And then you can bring those blocks up and give them to your agent. Now, it's really important that you put them into this pocket. So the top left hand corner is the pocket that your agent is going to be looking, looking into to get the blocks. So make sure that it's in that top left hand corner. OK, let's test out our code now. So I'm going to go back into Code Builder to see what our chat command was. And I keep forgetting test, so I'm going to change it to something else. I'm getting him to build a square, so I'm going to change it to build. That's what my agent is doing. OK, so now I'm going to double tap to fly up. Make sure I get a good view of my agent while they're building their square. T to talk and write in build. And almost perfect. It was almost perfect, except our agent bumped into this last block over here. So they bumped into it, which means there must be a bug in the code or something that's not right with our code. So let's go through our code here. On chat command build, Agent place on move, repeat four times, agent move forward by five, and agent turn left. So that code seems okay, but he's still bumping into the wall at the end. But we never looked at our special friend, the drop down arrow here. So why don't we check out this block? And there's a destroy obstacles version. So we're going to get another one of those blocks, which we go into agent and find it. And I'm going to click in here and I'm going to change it to show, destroy obstacles. OK, and to true. So if you're following at home, you can pause, find that block. And then unpause and come back in here with us. OK, so now I've told my agent. To whenever I say build. They're going to destroy obstacles, true, so they are going to do it. They're going to place box when they move, true, and then they're going to repeat walking forward and turning left four times. So that seems, seems like it's going to work. Now I need to move away from my current square to build another one. So I'm going to move far away, make sure I'm on the ground by double tapping my space bar, T to talk, get my agent to come here, using my command here. Say hello to our little agent again. Fly back up into the sky. T to talk. And type in build. And see if our square is a bit better than our other one. OK, almost perfect. So the agent did what we told them to do. They deleted the block that was in front of them, but then they finished here. So they weren't able to place another block. So how do we think we could fix this? OK, so we're making sure our agent is destroying obstacles, which is true. They're placing a block every time they move. OK, how about everyone who's at home pause now? Try and figure out how we can fix this. OK, so we're going to go into the agent section and we're going to see if we can get them to move forward by one more block. Now, where do we think we should put this block? So I'm going to put it. Should we put the block up at the top or at the bottom underneath the loop anyways? Because we only want it to repeat once. We don't want it to repeat four times, do we, Kaylin? You're so right there, Neve. So we don't want them to repeat it in the loop. 
So now we need to see if we want them to move one extra one at the beginning or at the end. But I think it's at the end because the gap in our wall is at the end. So why don't we test it out there? OK, so if our agent moved forward by one there, test out our code one more time. Fly far, far away. Go down to the ground. T to talk. Get our agent to come over here. OK, say hello again. Fly back up to the sky. T to talk and build. OK, so almost perfect, but there is still a bug in our code. So yet again, if you're following at home, pause the video now and join us again once you've found out how to fix the code. So our agent is destroying obstacles, placing on move and repeating these two blocks. So the last thing that they're doing is turning left which means that then when they're moving forward, they're going that way. OK, and that's why they're bumping in. So we're going to try and go up because there's no blocks above them yet. OK, and we're only going to go up by one. So this is a really important thing to know about coding. It takes it might take some time to get your code perfect, but hopefully we'll get it now on our last try. OK, move far away. OK. Fall down to the ground. T to talk. Get our agent to come here. OK, fly back up to the sky. T to talk and build. Now, hopefully our agent will get it right this time. Aha, perfect. We finally have our perfect square and you can see our other attempts are over there. We got it in the end. And now I want you just to think about that last block of code, OK, because we might be using that next week as well. OK, so back to Neve. Thanks, Kaylin. So, we're going to discuss what we learned today. So, today we learned what a sequence is. So, a sequence is the order of your programming instructions. Okay, so we learned that it was really important to place the blocks in the right sequence. The second thing we learned indirectly was what a bug was, and a bug is an error in our code. We also learned how to debug, which is how to fix an error which occurred in our code. And finally, we learned all about loops, and loops enable code to be executed repeatedly for a preset number of times. So today we were learning about a square, so we set it to four times because a square has four sides. So I am now going to set you some home challenges to keep you busy coding before our next Minecraft webinar next week. So your first home challenge is all about Mo. So Mo is our little character in this diagram. So you can see Mo is the smiley face there at the top of the diagram. And we need to guide Mo home. So you can see Mo's house is down the bottom. But there's a couple of rules. Mo can't leave the road, so we can see the road outlined in black and we can also see there are dead ends at the end of each road. OK, so Mo can't go across these dead ends, so you need to guide Mo using instructions or directions back home. So one hint I would give would be to maybe use the squares in the diagram. Your second home challenge involves you becoming a creator. So you need to create your own roadmap, create your own character and create your own endpoint, whether it be a house or a location. So you create the roadmap and then challenge one of your family or friends to complete it. So to guide your character to the end location. 
And your third and final home challenge will be where you will create a physical course. So you find a large space either in your house or in your garden and a willing participant that wants to be blindfolded and directed through the course to get from one end to the other. And then you could even swap over and you could be blindfolded and directed through a different obstacle course by a family member or friend to get to the end point. So I hope you have great fun completing the home challenges. For any teachers or educators watching in today, I would like to point out that we have a blog available on our Wakelet. So if you go to www.aka.ms forward slash home space files, you will find information there about the blog and you'll be able to find more information on Minecraft and Minecraft education. So now, has anyone any questions? So we're going to go through some of the most popular questions in the Q&A section. So one of the first questions I see there is, Kaylin, what's the difference between playing Minecraft and coding in Minecraft? OK, so when you are playing in Minecraft, you are the player and you're doing all of the builds. Whereas when you are coding, you're able to get your agent to do some of the build for you. So that means that you're able to code, you're able to make a build that's a lot neater and it's able to build it a lot quicker than you would. So you can see there, we were able to build our squares in seconds. Whereas if we were going and building it ourselves, it would have taken a lot longer. So if you're doing a nice big build of a big castle, you're able to use the code to get your agent to build it a lot quicker. Great. And another question that I see has popped up a couple of times, Kaylin. Why are the coordinates so useful or so important? OK, so today we we use them to see where our agent was at the beginning. We were able to see that we were actually standing on top of our agent. Um, but later on, you'll be able to see that we will be placing items using the coordinates. So there are blocks that are in the code builder that allow you to place an item using the coordinates. So we'll be using those later on in the series. So make sure that you have that turned on um, in your world before you get started. Very good. And another question, Kaylin, um, was why is there only one way to do things like for example when we were building the square one one question that i've got here now is although he was facing or the agent was facing outwards while um creating the first square did they not correctly complete a square they did create a square they they walked around in a perfect square we were just demonstrating how there are a number of different ways to get your agent to do the same thing. So in coding, there are sometimes a number of different ways to get to the same action. So that's what we were showing you there. Okay, great. So I think that's all the questions for now. Um, Kaylin, would you like to take over and just thank everyone for joining us today? Yeah, exactly. So on behalf of the entire DreamSpace team, I'd like to just thank everyone for joining in um, and coding along with us. And just remember to save your game before you close it, because make sure that you have all the stuff there and all of your previous squares there for when you join in next week. And I'm looking forward to getting coding with you again next Friday. Very good. Thank you, everybody.